When I made last week's video, I had a list of 10 or so archetypes that I wanted to see get a wave of modern support. Seems like a lot of you had the exact same ideas as I did, as well as some suggestions that I hadn't even considered. So this time around, I've picked out 5 archetypes that are starving for new support. Ranging from archetypes that are far too minuscule to pose a threat, lacking a solidified playstyle, and or their strategy is just outdated. Let's make these decks great again. A top pick of mine is and always will be Dark Scorpions, a GOAT format staple comprised of Dark Warrior monsters mainly focused around control effects that are activated when those monsters inflict battle damage, forcing discards from your opponent's hand and milling cards from their deck among other period relevant effects. For a battle focused archetype, they are severely lacking in any respectable attacking power. The first agenda for a Dark Scorpion modern support card should either focus on greatly increasing their strength to make it easier to actually proc these effects, or if we want to go down a more gimmicky but serviceable route, a field or continuous spell that burns your opponent for each Dark Scorpion that you control then allows you to activate one of each of their effects. Traditional hand ripping and milling have really fallen out of favor in the modern game due to how much more powerful the graveyard has become outside of standard recovery cards and effects. An effect that Dark Scorpions could benefit from is allowing their effects to banish the cards instead of sending them to the graveyard, or banishing any cards sent to the graveyard by a Dark Scorpion monster. The problem that the archetype runs into is that it would overall be easier to just fully retrain and modernize the monster lineup, but at that point they might as well be a completely different archetype. But going into the extra deck, because the levels of the Dark Scorpion monsters vary quite a bit, an in-theme Link monster would be their most viable option. They could also receive a Synchro monster if said Synchro monster copied the effect of Cyber Slash Harpy Lady to treat a Dark Scorpion as a tuner for its summon. As far as an archetypal Link boss monster, Saryuja Skull Dread feels like a good starting point to take some inspiration from, adding consistency and some light spamming that this deck is desperate for. I think a Link monster would make a perfect retrain of their spell card Mustering of the Dark Scorpion, which lets you special summon one of each Dark Scorpion name from your hand if you control Don Zalug. If we should be so lucky as to receive a new Dark Scorpion main deck monster, I want to see a special summoning clause on that bad boy. We'd also need an effect that brings out another Dark Scorpion and or some protection from or negating your opponent's card effects that activate during the battle phase. There is a lot of work that needs to be done with Dark Scorpions in order to bump them up to a meta contender, and that's almost entirely on the basis that they are beyond outdated in their effects. An archetype that was suggested that I hadn't even considered is Hazy Flame. I'll keep it real real with you. I've never played Hazy Flames a day in my life, and I hadn't considered them because I forgot that they existed. I was going to run a crash course and play test the deck to see where it needs improvement, but upon looking at the cards of the archetype, the problems that this deck has started to punch me in the face. It's an archetype of 7 level 6 monsters, of which only 2 have any semblance of a special summoning effect. Surely they have other means of putting these bodies on the field in an easier way. Yeah, a non-searchable continuous trap and spell, and both allow you to normal summon a hazy flame for one less tribute. Lovely. Fire monsters have received a ton of ridiculous support as of recent, and hazy flames benefit from approximately none of it. So, the first addition that this archetype needs is easy, low level monsters, and these can easily be incorporated into the playstyle of the deck by special summoning themselves by revealing another hazy flame in your hand, then identifying as a level 6 monster. The deck would benefit even further from these cards if they were pyrotype, and because of that inclusion, an in-theme bonfire would carry this deck for miles hopefully not at the same price tag. One aspect that I was really interested in with the archetype is that all of their main deck monsters cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects. That's fantastic, let's firmly grasp onto that. We can build onto that with a field spell, because no competent archetype can rely on a continuous card that protects them from destruction as well, and for good measure, special summoning hazy flames from graveyard. Because this deck is exclusively made up of monsters that would need to be tributed, instead of going the typical special summon all of the monsters route, I think the deck would be a perfect fit for a monarch-esque engine, offering powerful effects when a hazy flame is tribute summoned, and perhaps an archetypal spell that allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters for their summon. An archetype made up of only high level monsters isn't the worst thing in the world, however it's only going to work if that deck has the means to actually play their cards without relying on outside support to pick up the slack. We're not playing poker, I want these cards out of my hand. I can fully recognize when certain cards are printed only as fan service for anime fans, and the Cooler archetype fits that bill in every aspect. 
what the hell am I supposed to do with these three goobers? For those unfamiliar, this archetype of three low-level Earth machines consists of tricular, bicular, and unicycular. In that order, when they are destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, they special summon the next lower form from the hand or deck. That was good about 17 years ago, and even then it was losing confidence. The downgrading upon destruction is an interesting choice, I suppose. Everyone would have preferred that it went in the opposite direction, but let's work with what we have. Since they are all machines with 500 or less attack, machine duplication is an obvious choice for them. They may not necessarily need it, but an in-theme retrain of machine duplication could at least give more access to that spamming capability. Relying on battle destruction is far too slow and inconsistent for today's game. What I'd want to see in order to modernize that is a field spell, call it Bike Shop, that allows you to activate their effects when removed from the field by any means, including being used as material for extra deck monsters. I'm not inclined to give this archetype any kind of boss monster though. I think they'd serve very well as a small spam engine that has a variety of extra deck tools. I am, however, inclined to give them a level 4 monster. And what I'd want to see from that is the ability to special summon itself, be that on its own merit or jumping on the field when a cooler monster is removed from the field, but to tie in with the rest of your monster lineup, the deck would largely benefit from being able to put three cooler monsters with the same name on the field if this new level 4 monster is removed from the field. Lastly, because the deck relies on your cooler names to be either in deck or the hand and can't really do anything with the names in grave, incorporating a way to return all of your cooler monsters from the grave to the deck would aid in restarting your loops. And I think that this could be done with a banish from grave effect on the level 4 monster or in a quick play spell card, call that one spare parts. Another suggested archetype was blocks and any chance that I can get to advocate for better rock support, I'm gonna jump on it. So, the infamous Block Dragon. First off, free my boy. Secondly, it's got the protection that we need in this deck and some very welcome searching. If Konami is inclined to keep Block Dragon banned, then we have two effects to be turned into cards. Block Golem offers a fair amount of recovery to any rock monsters and Block Man provides some efficient field spamming provided you can protect him. There's also Block Spider. Frankly, I'm more frustrated that it's considered a block monster. So how do we put all of these blocks together? Regarding Block Dragon's effect, the archetype overall would benefit from a field spell that mimics Dragon's effect, specifically protecting your block monsters from any form of destruction if all of the monsters in your graveyard are rock type and or earth attribute, tying in Golem's effect. We need to keep these effects strictly connected to blocks as much as possible or else the entire archetype is going to be banned. I would suggest an in-theme Foolish Burial to aid with Golem and Dragon's effect, however we do have Miracle Rupture which fits perfectly with these bricked up boys. But on the flip side, an interesting addition that is somewhat tied to Foolish Burial while incorporating Block Dragon's second effect would be a spell card that dumps a high level rock monster from your deck then allows you to add block monsters whose combined level equal that of the sent monster. Of course, with that, we'd need more low level block monsters to widen our search pool, and we can go in either direction with Golem or Man. Adding more level 3s gives better access to Gorgonic Guardian, adding more level 4s gives better access to Gallant Granite, and you know damn well which one I'm leaning towards. Hello? I don't want to say copy the Ad Emancipator monster effects with these cards, but copy the Ad Emancipator monster effects with these cards. Blockman having the ability to spam hella tokens pushes me into saying that the deck could use a modern link retrain of Block Dragon as well. Because the field spell is only protecting from destruction, having this card put in some legwork with either Omni Negates or fully turning off an opponent's monster for the turn would really help blocks in continuing plays after putting Link Block Dragon on board. I'd really love to be able to play a knockoff Lego deck, but Konami is just afraid of innovation. And for the final archetype in today's plead with Konami to give modern support, unions as of recently have received a ton of really good and almost too good support. And by unions, I mean the A to Z lineup. But I haven't forgotten about the forefathers of union monsters, the true OGs that lack viability and clothing. I'm referring to none other than the Su archetype, comprised of two normal monsters, Aitsu and Soitsu, and their respective union monsters, Koitsu and Doitsu. Koitsu grants a 3000 attack boost with piercing damage, and Doitsu grants a flat 2500 attack boost. The flavor text of their vanillas couldn't describe the archetype any better if it tried. Completely unreliable, but let's fix that. 
So, beginning with the normies, because they are crucial to be on the field, an in-theme unexpected Daya which includes both Aitsu and Soitsu is very much needed. As it is now, only Soitsu can be summoned with Dai. This will help to get your starters on the field effectively. And I can safely say that this can be a non-once per turn and not reliant on you controlling no monsters. Going into the Union monsters, the deck would make excellent use of retrains for Union Hanger and Carrier. There needs to be an efficient way for the deck to get to their Union monsters that isn't just rollout. Especially for Koitsu being absolutely packing in the level department. I would prefer the Carrier retrain to be a Link 1, so the deck can immediately start turning out their Union monsters. Again, we're very battle focused with this archetype, so a thematic means of protection will be required as well, or at the very least a card that recovers your normal monsters and or unions if destroyed by card effect. We don't necessarily have to put our focus fully on battle destruction thanks to the buffs from our union Sioux monsters. I ended the last video with a gimmicky suggestion for modern interplanetary purpley thorny support, and I'll be doing the same with the Sioux archetype. I want to know the lore of the kites they fly on, so I'm tying in the kites, and would want to see that made into an equip spell that can pop itself while equipped to turbo out the appropriate union monster for the normal Sioux monster that it was equipped to. This could also offer some protection or further buff be that direct attacking or doubling attack, with a Banish from Grave effect. Do I think that these archetypes will ever get a modern wave of support that is actually substantial in making them competitively viable? I'm almost entirely leaning towards no. None of these decks can be nostalgia baited. None of these were once a topping deck that Konami thinks fans would want new retrains for. I still hold out hope that these decks will receive new support, when all is said and done, there's no reason that Sue couldn't have been given the A to Z treatment and been the tier 1 deck during the reign of A to Z. Snake Eyes? What about Hazy Eyes? They're both fire-based strategies and there's simply no reason that Hazy Flames couldn't have been updated and been the tier 0 menace that Snake Eyes is currently. And I could say this about every tier 1 meta dominating deck that we've ever had. It could have been a new support wave for an old deck, but we got what we got. Thanks, Konami. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion. Let me know your thoughts. What are some other archetypes that you want to get new support for? Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.